So in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new features that our firmware update for the RS series provides. And this is very exciting because this is one of the largest firmware updates we've ever done. And I'm going to start right here on this side of the screen where we have our source menu. This, of course, is where you choose the source that you want displayed on the True Touch by selecting the proper button for the port. And one of the things that we've added here is we've added this key that tells you what it means when the button is lit up in a certain color. So for instance, if it's gray, that means there's no signal. The True Touch does not detect that anything is plugged in there. If there's an active signal in white, that means the True Touch actually sees that something is in fact plugged into that port. And then the live preview is blue. And let me show you that real quick, because there are a couple of basic instructions right here. If you touch the button once, that goes to live preview that you see right here. And if you just touch it twice, one, two, then you can actually bypass the live preview altogether and go right to that source. So that's also pretty handy. But another thing that we've added here is uh, customers have told us that under certain circumstances, it's actually good for them to be able to access a port even when it doesn't appear that anything is plugged in due to a certain device or a certain configuration. So now we've added that ability. So I don't have anything plugged into HDMI front, or at least it certainly appears that way. So I can touch it and it will actually go there whether the true touch detects that anything is plugged in or not. So that's another feature that we've added. Let's take a look at the new casting solution because that's another change that we made. Updating to our latest version, which is called New Line Cast. And the way to access that is to use the screen sharing button right here. And it fires up the application. And when it gets to the home screen, the instructions are actually very, very easy. It's one of the wonderful things about using this. When it creates a new session, as you can see it's doing here, the only really real requirement here for using New Line Cast is that the panel itself has to be on the network for internet access. But that's one of the great things about New Line Cast. We actually have a video that talks about using various devices with New Line Cast, so make sure you check those out. But the idea here is that as long as the panel has internet access, that's how people join is over the internet. And you can see the instructions right here are very simple. Either use a web browser and go to this URL using your device or use a Display Note app. And then when it asks you to, it will have you enter the specific session ID, and then people show up here as connections, and that's how you can use uh, wireless casting. So we're very happy with this solution because again, it's internet-based as opposed to infrastructure-based, and that's another new feature. So the updated whiteboard on the RS is actually very exciting because we've added a number of features to it, making it even more convenient than it already was. And the whiteboard button, that's another change we made. We actually went from calling it discussion to calling it whiteboard. And when you hit that button, sure enough, it takes you right to the embedded whiteboard. The writing tools are laid out the way that they have been in the past. With one addition, there is a lasso tool here in the middle. So when you have objects or ink on the screen, you can actually select them all as objects and move them around. So that's one great feature. But along with that, if we move over to this side, we've added additional features to make it even more convenient to use. One of those is being able to work with pictures. So we can import pictures by touching that button, choosing a specific folder where we have pictures stored that we want to use. I'll just choose this one right here, and sure enough, there it is on the screen. And we can actually work with this picture by moving it around and resizing it like so. I can also use this tool to rotate so I can work with pictures that way. Another tool that I have at my disposal is I have a text box tool. That's this letter right here. When I touch that, I can choose the color and the font and the size of the font in order for me to actually uh, put text on the screen and work with that as opposed to just using digital ink. So that's another convenient tool. Right next door to that, I've got a shape building tool. So choose the shape and the color you want and then just draw it on the screen like that. And if I go back, I can also choose a fill and I'll choose a different color and a different shape, and I can actually have filled shapes just like that. So it's another convenient way to add information to the whiteboard. So moving over to this side of the screen, we've actually added something very interesting. And as part of feedback that we got from customers, it's something that they wanted in order to make this easier to use. There's technology in the RS that we've talked about called object recognition. And the idea is that if you have a thin thing, like a thin stylus, and a thicker thing, such as a finger, you can actually have a couple of different colors and thicknesses of ink at the same time. 
and that's really a wonderful feature, but there are instances where if someone is using a writing utensil, and it doesn't matter if it's thick or thin, if they in fact are using the writing utensil and holding it a certain way, the IR sensors will actually pick up another object and that will draw a line that people didn't mean to create. So one of the things that we added to try and alleviate some of that is the ability through this cogwheel button right here to turn object recognition off with this switch. So you hit it once, it flips it over and that turns it off. Hit it again and that turns it back on. So if you don't need object recognition and you wanna have a little bit more flexibility with how writing gets on the screen, that's a way you can control that. So the overall, the whiteboard, the same ease of use, but we've added even more features to make it even more convenient. So now let's take a look at a couple of the features that we've added to the settings menu. And the first thing we're gonna to go to is over the air updates. So if I open the settings menu and go all the way down here to the bottom where it says about, notice there is an update system button right here, which means that you have the ability to manually check and see whether there are any additional updates for the panel, as long as the panel has internet access. But one of the great things about the addition of over-the-air updates is that when a new update gets pushed out, the panel will actually detect that, again, as long as it's on the network, and you can see a message that will pop up on the screen and allow you to press the button to initiate that update. So you'll be alerted when a new update is available. So that's a handy feature. Along with that, if I go to the power on off setting right here, and if I go down to the bottom of that menu, you see here I have a power button short press. And what that means is, and you can see that I have it set to sleep, short press and long press on the button. And this is particularly uh, important for folks who are using the OPS, which is the built-in Windows PC. The idea behind it is if I do a short press because it's set to sleep, what that means is that it will put the panel itself to sleep without powering off the OPS. And that's important because in certain instances, if there are Windows updates that need to happen, if the whole system is off, those Windows updates aren't gonna happen because the OPS is off. But if just the panel is asleep, but the OPS is still on, and if it has access to the network, then those Windows updates can happen. So that's an important feature that way. So, but I can control that here by choosing short press, putting the panel to sleep, or short press, uh, shutting the panel all the way down. Now, long press means if I hold the power button in for a couple of seconds, that's gonna initiate a shutdown regardless of how this is set. So you do have a setting for short press, and then a long press is always gonna be shut down. So depending on your configuration, that could be another important feature. So the last feature to show you is the passkey entry for the RS. As you can see, I'm right here at the start screen and I press to start and oh look at that, it wants me to enter a four digit pass key and the touch keyboard comes up. Now fortunately for me, I've set mine to something very simple that I can remember which is just 1111. Uh, but here's a case where let's say I forget my pass key, oh no, I don't remember what it is. Well I can touch this button right here and it says use the remote control and enter, it'll essentially be a master pass key that is provided by tech support. So in this case, all you do is give tech support a call and they'll help you out to get you back in the panel. But again, in my case, I know what it is. So I'll go ahead and touch this, get the touch keyboard up, one, 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 and then hit enter. And there we go, and I'm in the panel.